Big Pokemon Scarlet and Violet news just dropped, and everything is pointing to a grand Ash Ketchum adventure like no other, involving everything from pro rank trainers to terrestrialization. Terrestrialization? Yes, terrestrialization. So let's break down the latest Pokemon news, the hype, and how it might influence the future of the anime. Hey Charles, it's everyone, how are you today? We are just three months out from the release of the new Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video games, and the hype factory has been kicked into full gear. We even got news about a Scarlet and Violet themed 12 color pencil set and case announced for November release in Japan. And that is just beautiful. But the big banger we are bringing into the mix today is the Pokemon Presents that just aired, showcasing all kinds of Pokemon goodies, including new information about the world of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Information that most certainly has implications for the Pokemon anime. So today's plan is to break down how the anime's writers will wrap up the Pokemon Journey saga, how they will transition into the new Scarlet and Violet series based on the latest delicious intel, and what this means for Ash Ketchum's next big adventure. And as always, it is going to be a good time, so... I don't know. Subscribe, please. And let's bust out the juicy nuggets. Regarding the end of Pokemon Journeys, the marketing arm of the Pokemon Journeys anime hasn't pulled any punches in establishing that the series has hit its climax and will be coming to an end in the coming months. And while the final tournament of an ongoing series, and that period in which the early news of the next big thing begins to trickle out is a truly electrifying time, the way that Journeys is currently unfolding harkens back to some of the issues that emerged during the climax of the Pokemon XY slash XY and Z anime. Back then, XY slash XY and Z direct Director Tetsuo Yajima stated in an interview that he was given just one year to wrap up the series when the X, Y, and Z season began, suggesting that the season was initially planned without a firm grasp on when exactly it would need to end. Accordingly, the season stripped itself down more than weird Uncle Donnie after a few cool ones at your family's summer beach barbecue, leaving the season nearly devoid of filler. But it also resulted in Ash's Kalos League run and Serena's masterclass performances feeling a bit more rushed than one might have hoped. For comparison, the Wallace Cup in Diamond and Pearl was spread across five episodes, but the Masterclass competition in X, Y, and Z had only two episodes. Happy Dawn, Sad Serena. Similarly, viewers of Pokemon Journeys, the production of which has also been impacted by the Corsola Measles outbreak, let alone multiple directorial changes, are voicing concerns that the Masters 8 does not feel as fleshed out as it ought to, and that it truly is going to be a race to the finish with just about 13 episodes left to wrap up three character arcs. We'll have to wait and see to find out how everything pans out in terms of the specifics of the pacing, but what we can do is explore some information around how exactly Ash's Pokemon Journey's journey may end, and how the transition to Paldea might be set up. Currently, we have four possible scenarios. One, Ash beats Leon in the finals. Two, Ash draws with Leon in the finals. Three, Ash loses to Leon in the finals. Or four, Ash loses to Cynthia in the semifinals. What exactly will happen is anyone's guess at this point, but with regard to scenarios three and four, which could make your average Potter Cheeks fan tear up like a badger in the onion patch, there has been some officially released material that is accumulating that could be interpreted to suggest that Ash may not be winning this tournament. Firstly, Ash is Japanese voice actor Rika Matsumoto stated in a promotional tweet on May 27th, 2022 that winning isn't the only way to become a Pokemon master. Where does your true strength lie? I'd be happy if, through Ash, I could convey this to everyone. Well, nobody likes sucking down L's like buckwheat noodles at a soba shop, but the Ash Ketchum parable about what it truly means to be a winner that has emerged over the years is certainly something we can all learn from. That said, one just has to wonder if Rika Matsumoto's words foreshadow Ash's demise at the hands of the Purple Panther and yet another broken Charizard. Secondly, the Pocket Monster's original soundtrack Volume 2 CD was recently released in Japan, and it contains a full-color booklet complete with commentary on all of the CD's songs as well as character introductions by composer Yuki Hayashi. And the 21st song on the track is titled Yoasa, Weakness, a stirring piece that tickles the ivories in a melancholic manner meant to convey frustration, according to composer Hayashi, or more specifically as he says, to convey Ash's feelings about not even being able to make it to the top of the championships. You could interpret this in a few ways. One, Ash loses to Cynthia, never even ascending to the final. Two, 
two, that Ash loses to Leon in the finals, or three, that it could just be an interpretation of Ash's feelings on a different timeline, or for the sake of the art, and we should not pay any heed to Mr. Hayashi's words. Either way, it is an interesting cookie crumb to contemplate. But whether Ash wins against, draws with, or loses to Leon, or even makes it past Cynthia, he will need to press forward to a new adventure. Unless, of course, the anime's producers decide to press self-destruct on the most iconic character in Pokemon history for some reason. But let's ignore that unlikely scenario and instead ask the question, how will the writers set up Ash's motivation for embarking to Paldea when he is already competing on the biggest stage in the world? In an anime that hits reset more often than your average Fire Emblem player, anything is possible. But the discord associated with Ash rolling with the strongest trainers in the world only to immediately thereafter set his sights on a small regional competition would be pretty hard to ignore and just awkward. On the other hand, they could play the DBZ power creep card, setting up Paldea as the place where the real power players compete. And that could certainly work as long as the power creep does not start to get out of hand. And guess what? Scarlet and Violet will feature three distinct storylines that players can go back and forth between at will. Two of which are yet unknown, but one of which is a classic gym gauntlet in which players will travel across the lands searching far and wide to earn badges and strive to become a champion. The gyms can be pursued in any order, and interestingly, as the Scarlet and Violet website puts it, Paldea has a Pokemon League and a special class of pro rank Pokemon trainers who have achieved the champion rank. Apparently, if players earn the badges of all eight gyms, then they can take on a special test called the Champion Assessment to earn the rank of champion. And while we don't know exactly how these pro rank champions stack up against the regional champions of the other games, you can butter my butt and call me a biscuit if Ash or one of his friends friends does not pursue this story track. The only catch is that if the writers do decide to have Ash himself run the gauntlet but do not want to infuriate the fan base, then they need to be careful how they position the Paldea League and the champion rank trainers, considering that Ashy Boy is already both a regional champion and one of the strongest competitors in the world, having garnered accomplishments that nobody would want to see walked back. My initial reaction is that the Gym Quest Champion Assessment Pro Rank track could play out like an offshoot proving ground similar to the Orange League or the Battle Frontier in the context of Ash's story. But regardless of the specifics, I'm sure that many fans are happy about the possibility that the classic formula could be revived, as that seems to be what the majority of people want. That said, it probably makes sense to take the series in a slightly different direction until the dust on the Masters 8 settles, particularly to ease the sense of power creep if the writers are going to have us see Ash struggle through this next league, and accordingly, I suspect that Ash's motivation for heading to Paldea and his initial motivation for staying there will be connected to two other key elements of Scarlet and Violet that were just unveiled. So let's crack out the juicy nuggets. Firstly, the prospect of having Ash, and probably Go, head to Paldea to research new Pokemon or regional variants is the easy go-to premise for the writers to roll out. Furthermore, the new trailer introduced the Terrastal Phenomenon, a region-specific gimmick that not only makes Pokemon shine and glitter like gems, but gives them special powers in battle that would have Ash bouncing off the War Turtles to go check it out firsthand. We will discuss the Terrastal Phenomenon and its implications for the anime in more detail momentarily, but let us just note that with Ash Ash and Go primarily working as research fellows at the Cerise Institute over the run of Pokemon journeys, it would make perfect sense for Professor Cerise to send them to Paldea to investigate the terrestrial phenomenon at the conclusion of the Pokemon Journeys series. And while it is entirely possible that Go could be scrapped in favor of Scarlet and Violet's knockoff Brock and the emo Tumblr sister of Todoroki-kun, it would also make a lot of sense to keep him around. As his goal to fill up his Pokedex is always relevant, the mysteries of the region-exclusive Pokemon or other juicy nuggets could make for spicy tie-ins to his Project Mew plotline, and it makes more sense for Go to accompany Ash on this mission than for Ash to go it alone, unless the writers really do decide to push Go off in his own direction as a Project Mew chaser and give the full spotlight back to Ash. It's also quite possible that Professor Cerise has a direct connection to Professor Hot Primitive Lady or Professor Gigachad, or both, contacts who would function to Ash as great entry points into the Scarlet and Violet region. Much like when Professor Oak asked Ash and friends to link up with Professor Ivy in the Orange Islands and retrieve the GS ball 
back on January 28th, 1999. Oh, 1999, we miss you. Of course, back then, Ash decided to stick around the archipelago and compete in the Orange League before heading home. And likewise, he could decide to stick around for a gym side quest that is actually the main quest in Paldea. But I seriously do wonder if the anime would return to that structure immediately after the biggest tournament in the history of the show, and given how they have consciously broken away from it over the past six years. It's possible that Ash could accompany a buddy like Nimona on their gym challenge as a mentor from the get-go, but if Ash himself is participating in the challenge, then it feels like they should at least wait for a few months to distance the new competition from the Masters 8. In line with this thinking, once Ash turns up in the region for his research mission, or for whatever purpose, I suspect that he will initially stick around for something more unique to the Scarlet and Violet video games. And as such, the sticky pad that will keep Ash in Paldea is quite likely fruit. No, Mr. Ketchum will not be eating a devil fruit. I am referring to the oranges and grapes of the Scarlet and Violet school crests. The oranges and grapes school themes have been hinted at since the very first Pokemon Scarlet and Violet trailer dropped. Beginning with the oranges and grapes scattered throughout the game's announcement trailer, in the wild and on the crests of backpacks worn by the player characters, and in a full side-by-side -side display of the school crests on stone columns in the second trailer. And now we finally have concrete information on how exactly this system is set up. Located in Paldea's largest city, Mesagoza, the school is known as either Naranja Academy or Uva Academy, depending on the version of the game. P.S. In Spanish, Naranja means orange, and Uva means grape. To be honest, I was a little bit disappointed that the schools are version-specific, as having two rival schools would have been a really interesting concept. But regardless, the academy is a big facility at which both kids and adults can take classes to hone their academic skills as well as their battle skills, meaning that Ash will be able to meet all kinds of people and learn all kinds of things. Students at the school are also assigned an independent study project known as the Treasure Hunt, by director Clavel opening up the possibility for a number of interesting arcs as Ash and friends seek out their treasures. It's hard to say exactly how this concept might be adapted into the anime, as while the show still draws heavy inspiration from the video games, Pokemon Journeys certainly did blaze its own trail instead of following the formula of 2019's Sword and Shield games. Rest in peace, Nessa. And of course, we have already seen Ash attend the school on Meli Meli Island, so I don't think people want to see a rehash of that concept, but I don't think that we need to worry about that, as Scarlet and Violet is clearly rebuilding the school concept into something much grander in scale. And let's face it, we've basically swapped griffins with oranges, snakes with grapes, and foreheads with cheeks, but just imagine how fun a Harry Potter-like experience could be in the context of the Pokemon anime. With Ash and Go and or the new friends in Griffin Orange honing their unique skill sets, all the while solving mysteries, competing against rivals in everything from Project Mew style trial missions, to sporting events, to research tasks, to big battles, and meanwhile adventuring around the lands to complete various other quests, including something linked up to a much grander scheme, like the treasure hunt. The school plus adventure idea clearly lends itself to a hub and spoke setup similar to that of Sun and Moon and Pokemon Journeys, but hopefully the excursions would branch out into longer, more cohesive, more structured arcs than the willy-nilly here and there escapades of Pokemon Journeys. There's a lot of potential in this concept if it is approached correctly, as if Harry Potter's success tells us anything, it's that a strong school-based concept can be really, really appealing to people of all ages. And it would simply be a dandy way of pulling Ash deeper into the region after he turns up at the onset of the series, even if he does embark on his own adventure following the opening stretch of the show. Of course, I know a lot of people want to see a more traditional, linear adventure in the vein of the older series, even though that probably would go against the grain of the Scarlet and Violet video game, Games. And while I doubt we will see something as linear as the original series to XY era adventures, I do think that we will see Ash wrapped up in a battle quest once again, whether it is concurrent with his school experience or subsequent to it, and whether it follows the storyline of the games to a T or walks to its own beat like the World Coronation series of Pokemon Journeys. And no matter how things shake down, I am all fired up for the battles in this series because the Terrastal phenomenon is poised to be the most refreshing battle mechanic in years. In short, the new battle mechanics could turn out to be one of the best aspects of the anime. Firstly, we can infer that Dynamax will be left behind, and while the Z-moves and Mega Evolution could easily be brought along, part of me hopes that they will not be permitted in the region's battles, just so that we can have a breath of fresh air, as what we are getting is a fun twist on its own. Sure enough, just as the Japanese logos for X and Y and Sun and Moon teased Megas and Z-moves, the gems in the Japanese logos for Scarlet and Violet teased the central mechanic of the new games, and it is an interesting one. Using Terra 
orbs, the region's rough equivalent to Keystone's Z-Rings and Dynamax bands. Select trainers in Paldea will be able to terastalize their Pokemon into Swarovski crystal animal figurines with crown-like Terra jewels above their heads. Changing their typing to an underlying Terra type, which in turn boosts the power of any moves matching the Terra type, and shifts their weakness to that of their Terra type. What's interesting is that Pokemon of the same species can have very different Terra types. For example, according to the official website, some Eevees will have a normal Terra type, but other Eevees may have a flying Terra type. Not only does this rejig the conventions around Pokemon typing, but it adds an extra layer of mystery to every battle. All in all, the transformation looks as nifty as a shift tree, and I am happy to see a mechanic that looks more nuanced than the here it comes boy mechanics of the past couple generations. And I think this does have a lot of potential to do a lot of good for the anime's battles, as it would also force Ash to battle more strategically with respect to type effectiveness than he has in the past, one would hope, and that could be quite fun, especially if the types of attacks that get a boost shift based on his location in the region, meaning that he wouldn't be able to lean so much on Pikachu or his de facto seasonal ace. Any hoot hoots, the possibilities around Ash's motivations and the format of his new adventure are quite exciting, whatever shape they end up taking, and this is without even digging deeply into the other details we know about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Whether it be the implications of the messy time continuum implied by the wacky clock in the announcement trailer, and the general past versus future theme of the games, the role that the red and purple flying go goats will play in his story, the Terra Raid, how Nimona and other friends and rivals will factor into his quest, etc, etc. So let me know exactly what is getting you jazzed up about the new Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video games, how the juicy nuggets from the latest Pokemon Presents may factor into the anime, and don't forget to brush your teeth.